A very good evening to you all, and welcome to the second online concert from Leicestershire Chorale. You may remember back in July that we broadcast a similar event via our YouTube channel of music created by virtual means to simulate us singing together. But for this evening, you'll see the real thing. We are delighted to be able to work together in person and have been rehearsing for three weeks now since the middle of September, albeit in a very different way from that which we were used to pre-COVID-19. Last Thursday, October the 8th, we invited video and audio engineer Alan Hames into our rehearsal space to record our efforts thus far to present to you this evening in another online event. We are enormously grateful to Alan for his time in editing together both the recorded material from last week and the other items you'll see this evening. We also owe a debt of thanks to Reverend Jonathan Surridge, Vicar of St Philip's Evington, for working with us over a number of weeks during the Leicester lockdown period to ensure we were safe and legally able to return to singing in what has been our regular rehearsal base for well over two decades. And so to the music. We began tonight's concert with Henry Purcell's beautiful motet, Hear My Prayer, O Lord, which takes its text from the first verse of Psalm 102. Although not a long piece, the manner in which Purcell increases the musical and emotional tension through the mastery of his eight voice texture, coupled with some searingly chromatic, melodic and harmonic language, makes this piece one of the great unaccompanied choral pieces of the Baroque era. We now move to music written by Purcell's teacher and friend, John Blow. Let thy hand be strengthened, sets words from Psalm 89, the lawyer's psalm, more famously set later on in the Baroque era by Handel, as one of his coronation anthems for King George II. This version, however, in four parts, is a rather simpler, but no less elegant and jolly affair. So how have we achieved this return to live singing amidst the panic of a second wave of the virus and with Leicester and surrounding areas still in some form of local lockdown? So far, the government guidelines for the performing arts still allow for rehearsals and performances to take place that work to make their surroundings COVID secure. For us, that's meant undertaking a strict risk assessment of our rehearsal space and its surroundings, putting together a cleaning schedule, 
informing the singers of their respons responsibilities to each other within this restricted environment, and then working very hard each week to make sure things are in place for everything to run safely and smoothly for all. That's meant a 45 minute setup before each session, cleaning all relevant surfaces and removing anything we don't need from the space so that we can use the whole of the vast St Philip's Church Hall. We then set the chairs out spaced two metres apart using a tape measure, clean them and make sure our keyboard and conductor stand have been similarly cleansed. After our safety posters, one-way system indicators and hand gel dispensers have been put out, along with the bathrooms cleaned and all relevant doors wedged open, we invite in the singers, only five minutes or so before the rehearsal begins. They duly come in, be masked, and head straight for their seats. We only take off our masks to sing, and we rehearse right through with no break at the midpoint. At the end, after a few notices, it's back to primary school time, whilst I let them go in small groups, so as to avoid anyone mingling in the car park. It's certainly an alien experience to what we're normally used to, but very much worth all this extra effort to be able to make live music together again. But that's only my experience, so what's it like from the singer's perspective? Before you hear our next piece of music, a solo song taken from Purcell's ode, Welcome to All the Pleasures, Hear the Deities Approve, which then morphs seamlessly into a keyboard piece called A New Ground, you're going to hear from Tess, one of our singers and committee members, about how she feels coming back to live singing this term. Hello, my name's Tess and I'm an alto with Leicestershire Chorale. I've been singing with the choir for a couple of years now and the return to live singing has been massively, massively important to me. The digital projects that we did before during the lockdown were really fun and interesting as well because I've never done anything like that where you sing into the phone and then it kind of edits, edits it together with the apps and stuff. Um, and so it was cool to make music in that way, but there's nothing that can replace singing live, sharing the room with others um, that are singing at the same time in the same space as you. Um, there's nothing like it. So yeah. I love going on a Thursday to just escape the day-to-day -day concerns really of the world, concentrate on something that's in front of me and it really brings me happiness and joy to, to sing and make music with other people. I think singing something that you turn to almost when there's like nothing else that you're enjoying in your life and you always enjoy singing. Um, I uh, actually am myself a producer at Curve Theatre in Leicester, so I know the plight that the arts industry and music industry is in at the moment, and Leicester Chorale is, is a part of that. We might not be a professional choir that are paid, but we have the same issues and the same difficulties as any other ensemble or any other production in this country right now. Um, I've been on furlough since April, and I'm still waiting to go back to work. Um, and, and there's still yet to be, you know, full scale productions really socially distanced or not of things on in Leicester and only a handful of things on in other places. So the fact that Leicester Chorale is doing this is, is massively important and it's really, really specific um, and the minutiae of how they're managing things is, is, is super important and I really appreciate that as an arts administrator myself. Um, whether it's from the very strict social distancing that we observe in rehearsal with our chairs absolutely, you know, minutely spaced out at two metres, um, whether it's like that we have to wear masks when we come in, sanitise our hands, not speak or socialise to other people. We're just there just to sing for an hour and a half straight through with no breaks and, you know, we really have to focus and then we leave at the end in small groups and we can't socialise in the car park outside. You know, it's specific and it's not what we're used to, but Tom, Nikki, and other members of the committee have worked incredibly hard to risk assess and manage things so that we can be, you know, as safe as humanly possible while we're rehearsing as far as we possibly can be. So it's really, really great. And I'm very honored to be part of the choir.
Thank you to David Cowan for his efforts there in joining me by virtual means in sharing that lovely piece of secular Purcell with you. You'll now hear two choral pieces in a row. The first, another of Purcell's most beloved anthems, Remember Not Lord Our Offences. This piece has more of a slow moving homophonic texture than Hear My Prayer, but no less drama or build up of intensity. Following this, we then sing another four-part anthem of John Blow, with some hints of a Germanic fugato style which almost sound like Handel, even though he was to blossom as a composer a little later on in the English Baroque. Before that, another perspective from a chorale singer on coming back to live action, 
this time tenor Philip Leach. My name is Phil Leach and I'm a tenor with Leicester, Leicestershire Chorale and I've been singing with them for about two and a half years now, although I did do some singing with them before that. Singing has been pretty much my life um, ever since the age of eight when I joined the Cathedral Choir in Chester. Um, there's never been a time when I haven't been singing until this year. And the start of this year, uh, all those opportunities to sing basically disappeared. So to return to singing with Leicester Chakral has been an absolute joy. The sense of community and involvement when you're singing with other people um, is like nothing else. The, the, the focus, the concentration, the listening, the, um, the working as part of a, to, well, it's almost, almost sounds hackneyed, but as part of a team um, is, is challenging and uplifting and rewarding. Um, and, and doing that with Corral has been very special the last few weeks. Over the summer, we did do some work um, remotely um, using various, various apps, um, and that brought its own challenges um, and was also an interesting thing to do. The, the level of precision uh, you, you need to get a recording uh, together um, is is different and it was a it was a good learning experience for me it made me think about exactly what i was doing um and so that was a, a challenging time but it can't beat live singing and i am so glad to be doing that again with lester chakral
In working with the singers who have been able to come back to live rehearsals, we don't want to forget those who haven't been able to for various reasons. First of all, we wish renewed congratulations to Dan and Ellie Chinnery, who recently welcomed their son Gabriel Michael into their family. An online hello to Philippa Ouvry Johns and Cathy Jones, who were not able to be with us for this project for logistical reasons. Also to Alistair McQueen, whose successful recovery from cancer we hope will continue apace so that he can come back to sing with us again when the world is a safer place. We send all our love, support and prayers to Tony, Freya and Imogen Wood, who recently lost their mum and wife, Claire Parkins, in the last few weeks to a brain tumour. Claire was an immensely valued and loved member of Chorale, a stellar soprano and close friend to so many of us. We love and miss her so very much too, especially at this time, and remember her in our hearts as we broadcast this concert for you tonight. Here are two other singers who could not be with us in person for this project. First, Jeff Hopewell, to tell you a little of his experience coming back to live singing, and then Harvey Nightingale, who will sing for you Purcell's Evening Hymn. Hi. I'm Jeff Hopewell and I've sung bass with the Leicester Chorale for about five years now. I didn't have the technology to record the virtual concert that the Chorale produced a few months ago and I'm afraid you won't see me in tonight's lineup either as I was away in Kent when this concert was recorded. As a word for that, well two words in fact. However I have really enjoyed our last three rehearsals and I know it's different with all the social distancing but it's so worthwhile. We can, can't enjoy the companionship in quite the same way, but there are advantages in being spread around the hall. Normally, as a bass, I'm sitting at the back, and all the other parts are singing forwards, so it isn't always easy to pick up a lead. In the new layout, I'm sitting somewhere in the front, so I can actually hear what Tom is saying, and I'm getting a surround sound from all the other parts behind me. In a strange way, it's actually a more complete experience. Enjoy the concert, everyone. You can't beat Purcell at his best. And I'm really looking forward to our next rehearsals. Bye.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. As many of you know, we've worked hard over the last 15 years or so to help encourage and promote young people, teenagers and university students, to develop a passion for choral music and choral singing, in part in the hope that they might carry on the story of choirs like ours into the future. With the arts and cultural life of our British Isles so imperiled as a result of this global pandemic, there is no more important moment to carry on that work than now. Obviously it's been very difficult in practical terms to run any kind of auditions for our renewed Choral Scholar Scheme this early autumn, and whilst that process is still an evolving one, I'm delighted to introduce you to Erica Lee Smith, our newest Choral Scholar who joined the choir this September, to tell you a little bit, little bit about how it's been for her to have the opportunity to start singing with us. Hi, I'm Erica Lee Smith and I've just joined Leicestershire Chorale as a new choral scholar. It's been great to be able to return to making live music with other people, um, particularly as a new person joining this term. I've been able to meet some really lovely people in the choir and also I feel incredibly lucky to be part of such a talented group of singers. I've also really missed live music, listening to live music and being part of performing um, over the course of the pandemic. So I've really enjoyed getting back into that and particularly singing um, in the building with other people, even though the circumstances are still really strange. We are also doing some really um, beautiful pieces of music and I'm really excited to see um, what else we'll be learning and performing for the rest of the year.
Here are now some words from Chris Ouvry Johns, one of our first bassers, but also in charge of the music at Leicester Cathedral, who face their own challenges in getting their musical operation back up and running post lockdown. My name is Chris Ouvry Johns, I sing bass, and I've been a member of Leicestershire Chorale for ooh, probably uh, six or seven years now. Um, I've really enjoyed being back in the live rehearsals after uh, so long in lockdown. I spend my professional life conducting choirs um, and one of the things I love about chorale is uh, being on the other side and singing with a choir and um, finding myself doing all the things that I'm pulling my own singers up for the rest of the time. Um, I also particularly enjoy um, the, the technical work that uh, Tom does with us at Chorale um, because I don't look after my voice as well as I should um, and to have what's in fact a mini singing lesson uh, once a week is also uh, really beneficial. Um, from a professional point of view um, it's been really challenging um, times for choirs and at the cathedral where I'm director of music um, we've just got back to um, getting our choirs together for live rehearsals. Um, a huge amount of work has had to go into that and I've been very grateful to Tom and Nikki for sharing um, their risk assessments and so on for, for Corral. Um, but the relief when we got into the building for the first time and all the chairs were laid out um, and the kids came back in um, and, and started singing together, um, it felt like the scales were starting to fall from our eyes and the uh, weight was starting to be lifted from our shoulders. There's a way to go yet, but um, it feels so good to be doing it again. And so before we leave you with a joyous setting of words from Psalm 122, I was glad, complete with its elegant dance rhythms, more akin to the French school of Jean-Philippe Rameau than the English cathedral world of Henry Purcell, I ask you to spare a thought for those who make all of our lives in this country a bit brighter and more hopeful by their professional musical expertise. Whether they be performers, composers, teachers, arts admin professionals, promoters or technicians, their livelihoods and professional existence are teetering on the brink of oblivion. As a society, we have a choice to make. If we wish for our cultural landscape to rise again when this virus is beaten into retreat, we must be prepared to stand up now to support those who enable us to enjoy what we love and value. It's increasingly clear that there is little understanding in political or wider societal circles of what it is like to pursue a freelance career in the arts, and just how much expertise will be lost should these people go under in the next few months. Please support them in any way you can, either through solidarity in joining campaigns such as the One Voice campaign, booking tickets at your local theatre, concert hall or comedy club for events scheduled in the next three months, or by donating to one of the many charities that have been set up to try and raise funds to keep freelance artists afloat now that government support has stopped. And finally, if you've enjoyed our music tonight, and wish to support our work as a choir, you can find details of how to donate via our website www.lestershirechorale.org.uk Thank you for watching this evening. <laughs>